The sound of the golf shot tells me all I need to know. Am I watching the swing? Of course I am. But ultimately, it's the sound that tells me what I need to know when evaluating a student. I'm PGA Teaching Professional Todd Cobb, Director of Instruction for US Golf TV. And we've all been on the driving range, right? And you're hitting golf shots. And the person next to you is just crushing their irons. It's a distinct sound. If you've ever been to a tour event or a, or a high level amateur event, there is a distinct sound of compressing the ball and then the ground and what I like to call crushing your iron. So how do you do that? Well, I'm going to share with you today a simple takeaway tip that can get you going in the right direction. So let's dive right into it. All right, so the first thing we got to understand before I give you the tip on the takeaway is understanding ball position. Because what we want to do to hit a solid iron shot is we got to come in contact with the golf ball before the, as the club is in a downward motion, right? We've done a ton of videos on this. We've done some fun ones with the hula hoops and all the types of things and stuff like that. But ultimately, when you're crushing your irons, when we hear that sound, the club is connecting with the ball in a down, what we call a downward angle of attack, all right? So for most purposes, now this isn't 100% true, but basically your golf swing is kind of a circle, kind of like a hula hoop, right? So the club is traveling down, it bottoms out, what we call low point, and then it works up. So if I make a perfect golf swing, and I've got my, you can see right here, I've got my alignment rod set up. When I'm practicing, this is one of the ways I like to set things up for, for my students, because I can see ball position and things. But if I've got the ball too far forward, obviously, right, I would never teach this, but, and I make a perfect swing, Okay, that probably wasn't a perfect swing, but you get the point. I bottomed out way back here. But the simple thing of getting the ball in the right spot will help you connect on the downward motion. Okay, that was a little bit better, still a little thin. So, where should that be? And then we're gonna talk about the takeaway tip. I believe for most golfers, especially amateur golfers, my experienced golfers, you know who you are out there, right? All right, I love hearing from you. I love the comments. I love hearing where you're from. What are you working on? What do you like? What you don't like? What can, what can we help you with? I love, I read them all every morning and I do my best to respond to them. But for I think most golfers, I like the ball to be positioned somewhere between typically the logo and the buttons on your shirt. So that's a little bit more back than what I might call traditional coaching because most golfers struggle with pivots and things like that. So by moving the ball slightly back, so from the face on position where my man Kyle's at right there today, I want that ball, this white rod, to be pretty much in the center of my heels and the ball pretty much straight out from it. That's where I would have that. All right, now, let's dive into the takeaway tip, right? That sound of crushing our iron. So, it has to do with the knuckles, right? You know I love looking at golf gloves. When, when I give a lesson, one of the first things I do is look at their glove. It tells you a lot, okay? We've done a ton of tips on grip and things like that. But the knuckles, specifically the last three knuckles on the lead hand, pinky, okay, ring finger, middle finger. All right, so what I want you to feel when you take this back, and I got Nick on the down the line camera, so Nick's gonna show this for us, is I want these knuckles, excuse me, these fingers right here, to feel like they actually rotate a little bit underneath. See that? Okay, now what most of you do if you're not crushing your irons, it's the topic of today, is your knuckles, excuse me, your fingers are rotating the other way. They're rotating this way. So let's do it with the club and let me show you what it looks like and I'm gonna show you how it impacts the top position and impact. All right, so here we go. So the old way would be rotating my fingers this way. See what that does to the club face? Lays it way open, right? If I rotate them the other way, the club face is more what we call in the vertical line swing system, okay, our coaching system, that's a square position. Now, we get that club in a square position by rotating the fingers that way. So if we take that feel and we get it up to the top, all right, rotate them under, right, and then I take it to the top, see that position right there? That's a position of a square club face, maybe even a little bit of a closed club face, and when I bring that down, boom, I can crush it. Let me go ahead and just hit one. All right, here we go. I got the ball position right there. I'm gonna rotate the knuckles. That was solid. I don't know, I don't know if it was crushing it. I don't know, Nick's kind of giving me the, the eye over there like, hey, it was solid, Todd, but it wasn't crushing it, all right? The old way, or what a lot of you are doing, is when you rotate it this way, the club face gets open at the top. Here we go, even with good ball position, rotate it, 
it's kind of a pick. So I don't need to watch a golf swing to know if somebody's crushing their irons. I can hear it, this tip right here in the takeaway. Take the fingers, the last three fingers, rotate them under. If you do that, you also will start crushing your irons.